Hi, this is John at Airborne Innovations. I wanted to show you the Desert Rotor ruggedized ground control station for UAVs and how that can fit in with some of our systems, including the Pico Radio and our dual thermal camera and zoomable HD camera pod. Desert Rotor's GCS has quite a few useful features for UAV controls, including an integrated embedded PC, dual monitors so you can customize your displays, uh, integrates well with the PixHawk and our dual camera gimbal system. And uh, it also has, in addition to full flight controls, which is integrated with our SBUS control, which will function over the robust Pico Radio link, and uh, integrated controls for payloads. So we have uh, pan and tilt for the gimbal, uh, zoom controls and focus, as well as gimbal mode. So we have this set up to control our dual camera gimbal pod at the moment. So we have pan, tilt, and uh, zoom and focus control through the Desert Rotor GCS. So we have one of our Pico Radio modules connected to the system here uh, set up as it would be on an aircraft with our cooler attachment, uh, sucking air from the top and blowing air over both sides of the radio module. And the radio is connected to the gimbal pod uh, with Ethernet going over the gimbal slip rings. So you have full 360 pan. And uh, command and control is connected uh, via the primary serial port to the PixHawk. And then the, the uh, other serial port is connected to our SBUS module. So uh, robust uh, control is achieved by transmitting uh, serial data over that serial, serial port uh, and where it's converted back to uh, SBUS. Just to show some of the controls set up on the Desert Rotor GCS, so we have uh, full flight controls on the main stick and we have uh, uh, gimbal pan and tilt set up on the payload joystick, a zoom set up on the main dial and then focus control modes set up on uh, uh, dial A which are autofocus, uh, infinite focus or some intermediate zoom control and uh, then we have uh, gimbal mode set up so we can either uh, unlock the gimbal, uh, set the gimbal to a normal control mode or set it to fixed pan and then uh, on uh, switch D right now we have set up uh, gimbal speed, pan and tilt speed so we can have a fast pan and tilt, medium or slow. So this particular GCS has an Intel Core i5-7300 CPU at 2.6 gigahertz which is more than enough to handle dual simultaneous HD and thermal video coming back from the camera pod as well as uh, be used as a control station for the uh, PixHawk uh, mission planner. And just to show you a little bit of how the system is set up we can pop over to the configuration interface for the channels on the Desert Rotor unit. So uh, that is set up on the AV input channel and so they have a pretty useful little user interface which shows you uh, different controls such as pan, pan tilt, uh, knob status, and uh, the secondary dial which we have set for focus control. And uh, you can navigate around in their interface and see their flight control channel assignments and how that all works. So you have throttle, uh, pitch, roll, yaw for the vehicle, and then uh, also you can you can change uh, channel settings so uh, Desert Rotor is integrated with our SBUS control system so they are actually generating serial data that is sent uh, robustly in a, a uh, checksum packet format which uh, which uh, interfaces with uh, the Pico Radio system and then gets decoded back into SBUS uh, where it's uh, plugged into both, in this case, both into PixHawk as well as into the gimbal for gimbal control. And then additionally, SBUS commands go uh, are received uh, 
by a multicast serial at the gimbal pod where they're converted back into zoom and focus control commands. So in this case, uh, again, we have, uh, so aux one is set up to gimbal tilt. Uh, aux two is gimbal, is the gimbal knob. Of course, gear, the gear channel here is set up to gimbal pan. And then uh, uh, aux three is dial A, which we're using as focus control. And aux four is switch B, which we're not using, which is the, the uh, robust payload uh, uh, interlock control. Aux five is switch C. In this case, we're using that for gimbal mode. So we can uh, either turn off the gimbal motors, have a standard standard mode or pan lock mode. And then uh, switch D is what we're using for uh, gimbal rate mode switching, which is either fast, medium, or slow uh, pan and tilt rates. And then the final channel is uh, what we have remapped to focus control. So uh, this, this goes out on SBOS channel 12, which is the dial A. And so in this, this control, we have either uh, counterclockwise, full for autofocus, full clockwise for infinite focus, and then intermediate control. So you can do manual focus uh, by uh, controlling focus rate. So either zero, positive, or negative focus rate and then back to neutral to, to stop the focus. So we have slow pan, medium, and fast pan mode. And finally to show some of the gimbal configuration, we'll plug into the gimbal and run their uh, user configuration software. And connecting to the gimbal, so we select the connection, select the COM port, click on connect. And then we're connected to the gimbal configuration. We can go into settings and look at controls. So just to show the uh, S plus channels we have set. So right now channel 10 is set to mode. Channel six is tilt. Four is roll, and uh, that's actually uh, something we should map to a different channel probably. But pan is set to channel five, tilt speed is channel 11, and pan speed is also set to channel 11. So in connecting to a Pixhawk with the Pico Radio system, you essentially set up a TCP connection mode in the Mission Planner software. Click on connect and enter the IP address of the airborne radio and the remote port which is here set to 20,003 and then click OK and it begins to connect. And just to show you some of the configuration for the our uh, Pico Raptor video encoders, the uh, uh, main interface is uh, through the IP address slash config.html and uh, you can see a number of different configuration options including uh, streaming video configuration types. Uh, the default we use is RTSP and uh, uh, video input source, in this case DVI, and uh, for a Pico camera that would be the global shutter micro camera option. Uh, output resolution, frame rate, bit rate, so here it's set to 4 megabits per second. Uh, which is kind of a pretty reasonable medium medium level uh, uh, video quality. Uh, Pico Radio is capable of over 12 megabits per second. 12 megabits is a pretty typical uh, bit rate to achieve at range. Uh, the radio itself is capable of over 20 megabits, but uh, 12 is a is a pretty adequate medium ground for uh, a range, long range configuration. And then uh, serial configuration, so uh, in this case we're using the onboard serial port on the encoder to control zoom and focus through our uh, uh, SBUS packet to VSCA uh, control module. 
Uh, here we're receiving the data over multicast, so uh, we have that serial port connected to receive multicast serial data. And uh, finally the submit button to uh, make changes active. So in this setup we have some icons set up on the desktop to start the video stream. So we have the thermal stream and the HD stream so we can move them across to the opposite windows and maximize and then of course you can have uh, dual simultaneous streams on uh, both video screens and you can still run your mission planner interface as well as needed. So here's the serial settings for the base station unit. So this is set to the primary serial port with UDP point to multipoint P for the point source. Multicast mode uh, with the multicast IP address and the primary multicast broadcast serial port and a multicast interface set to LAN. Then on the airborne radio side we have uh, similar configuration, so the primary serial port is being used for uh, the SBUS control, so that's connected directly to one of our serial to SBUS modules. And then uh, protocol configuration, UDP point to multipoint MP, so this is one of the multipoint receivers. The other side, the other one is inside the gimbal, one of the gim encoders serial ports is uh, receiving multicast serial data as well. Uh, remote serial IP address here, which is really would really only be important for broadcasting serial data back. In this case, it's a unidirectional uh, remote port, and then the multicast IP address, multicast port, and multicast interface also set to LAN. So then on the wireless status page, so you can look at uh, first of all wireless status. So that shows the uh, the radio configuration and uh, so then under wireless status you can see the radio connection modes you can see uh, signals and noise ratio for the for the uh, radio uh, connection RSSI and uh, which is received signal strength indication and uh, some other indications you can do an RSSI graph for example and then you can go to the RF configuration tab uh, this is where you could change channels, RF frequency channels for instance, uh, and transmit power. So here it's set to 28 dB, so the maximum is 30 dB, 1 watt. And uh, channel frequency, wireless distance parameter, so MIMO mode, so this is a Pico Radio MIMO version, 2.4 version in this case. Uh, master, so we usually set the airborne radio as master. And then uh, transmit mode, so this you can either let it let it auto switch between modes, or you can set it to one of the modulation modes, uh, such as 16 QAM uh, mode, to to fix a particular one, uh, which can be useful sometimes if the modes are either rapidly switching or uh, uh, that that can sometimes assist to achieve more range potentially. Then on the base station radio side, so if you wanted to switch channels, you could switch the airborne channel first and then switch over to the base station and uh, set, uh, select the RF tab again and change, change uh, frequencies on the base station radio as well. So uh, the uh, wireless distance parameter should be set to at least the uh, the distance that you were operating in, uh, and uh, essentially not much more than that. So if you're if you're wanting to operate at uh, five kilometers, for instance, you should set it to something uh, somewhat above five kilometers. And uh, setting it too high arbitrarily can reduce the amount of bandwidth available. And uh, transmit power uh, for. For bench testing, you want that something reasonably low, like 26 dB here. For flight, you probably want to switch that to 30 dB to achieve a maximum range. And of course, the choice of antennas uh, affects, affects your range. We have an antenna combination that's typically good for about 5 miles 
uh, with an Omni on the aircraft and then a somewhat directional antenna at the base station. There are some other antenna choices which, uh, which could be useful depending on how you're going to operate the system. So if you need to do uh, just pure Omni at the base station, we have, we have one option for that. Uh, so an Omni antenna, uh, which, which uh, typically squeezes some of, the, some of the power spectrum of the antenna towards the horizon. So it may not be a great choice if you're wanting to fly nearby at altitude, for instance. But uh, for long distance uh, at range and Omni, that would be one choice. Uh, for five mile range, we recommend our somewhat directional antenna at the base station. And then for longer than that, uh, you need to look at either an onboard RF amplifier, so we have an RF amp option, or you can use our, uh, tra our new tracking antenna. And so that that's... Uh, good for considerably more than five miles uh, uh, depending on how you're operating the system but uh, that that can be the next step in achieving the next range bump up and we have customers going up to about 75 miles with very large tracking antennas uh, combined with RF amplifiers so it's a pretty scalable system so you can also use VLC to stream and record video so we have uh, couple of VLC icons set up here at the moment so we have uh, both channels of video uh, that you can set up on the VLC and then uh, record uh, use the, re the advanced recording controls on VLC to record uh, video for instance our uh, uh, the VLC has slightly larger latency than the uh, G streamer, but we're still around the 200 millisecond range for that. Uh, the the uh, G streamer links have quite low latency, uh, as low as about 100 milliseconds, depending on which video mode. So, all in all, the Desert Rotor GCS is a very useful addition to anyone flying UAVs, and it fits very well with our airborne innovation systems, including Pico Radio. S Plus modules and our camera gimbal solutions. So, thanks for watching.